As the global coronavirus pandemic continues, consumers are getting more comfortable with online shopping, even for big ticket items like vehicles. So when an advert popped up selling affordable pre-loved cars on auction, it looked like a pretty good deal. But for some unlucky buyers, it turned out to be just an elaborate ploy to get them to part with their hard-earned money to a dealership that doesn't even exist. In Cape Town and Johannesburg, Masa Kakana and I tackled this one together. Looking for a cheap set of wheels? Then beware of dream deals advertised on Facebook. They could be part of an online car auction scam that's fleeced hundreds of consumers. First time buyer Wade wanted to open a small business and had his heart set on this red chef bucky he saw advertised by car global auctioneers. Generally, they go for about 120. They advised that this bucky would go for, for around about 44,000. So the guy initially dealt with his name was Hendrik. And then the, the manager, like, he went by the name of, of Peter. Hendrik advised him that if he wanted to secure the car and keep it off the auction, he must pay a holding deposit of 10,000 rands. Now, if you pay your holding deposit, I'm saying they will give you 21 working days to pay the remaining balance. But if you can pay the remaining balance within the period of 21 days, your deposit is fully refundable. Another voice note from the so-called manager, Peter, explains why Wade couldn't attend the auction in person. Yeah, since there's this uh, COVID-19, so actually the auction they already fully booked because we take certain numbers of people for, for auction, you see. So I don't know, that's why I was pushing that if we can manage to secure it before it goes for an auction, that was uh, going to be a best option. Did you ask to see the car? Definitely asked to see the car. After paying the holding deposit, which was a 10,000, and I asked them when can I actually come through and see the vehicle, they advised that I can come through and see it um, once, once we've paid the rest. We pay the rest of the funds. What address were you given? 29 Springs Road, Nigel. And when you got to that address? Leslie, we were in the middle of nowhere. Catherine's mother thought she'd found the bargain of a lifetime on Facebook and a Suzu double cab bucky for just 80,000 rands. After she paid a 10,000 rands deposit to global car auctioneers, she asked Catherine's fiancé to go and inspect the car at their Heidelberg showroom. So she phones me back and she tells me, OK, they want more money. I said to her, you do not pay more money because this whole thing is a scam. It's a setup. You need to go to your bank, cancel it and go report it to the police. She says, yeah, but they've already got my money and Petrus is already halfway to Heidelberg. What did Petrus find when he got there? He found on the corner just an empty workshop. This is one Kismet Street in Heidelberg. And if you believe in fate, this is where many naive buyers are about to be scammed. As you can see, it's an old workshop. No shiny cars, no auction floor, no salesman offering you a great deal. The only magic trick happening here is your money about to disappear into thin air. To put her mind at rest, Catherine's mother had actually asked Car Global auctioneers for their boss's ID. Now they did send your mom an ID. They sent Wesley Martin's ID. We traced Wesley to an address in Cape Town. Masa Kekana paid him a visit. It's Wesley Martin. My name is Masa Kekana. I'm from Carte Blanche. Okay. He confirmed the ID was his, but knows nothing about any car auctions. Yourself, is this the first you've heard of this? I don't even know what you're talking about. Is that the one you lost? He says he lost his ID book a few years ago and showed us his new ID with a more recent picture. Other IDs used by the syndicate belong to Peter Murray and Nick Muller, with Nick bearing a striking resemblance to Peter. These syndicates often commit identity fraud, according to Cape-based consumer journalist Wendy Nola. It's a classic 419 scam just with cars. So the, um, it's all fake, phony, fraudulent. There's, there's nothing real about it. They take photos from wherever they can get them on the net. And what they do is lure you with that wonderful offer. Bottom line, 
what they're selling doesn't exist. That's, that's the common denominator um, with all these awful, awful scams. What are some of the methods that they use to make everything seem legitimate? The language they use, they claim to be, the names they give um, would suggest their first language English speakers, but the actual way they use the English, English language is not. And also there's a sense of urgency. These cars are in hot demand. The fraudsters are always hurrying you. They don't want to give you a chance to check things out. This is not the bargain of the decade. This is you being ripped off massively. What's more, the scam is nationwide and uses different names. Marika from Mpumalanga thought she was buying a Hyundai iX35 from Bank Repo Discovery. What were they asking for it? 69,000 at first, but then they gave us a 10,000 rand discount. They've actually provided us with ID documents and uh, the address. They have like a website that you can view. But all the documentation was false, including the invoice, the address and the website. It was only after she'd made payment that Marika noticed the strange font on the car registration papers. So I immediately knew something was wrong. When I tried to call them, um, my number was blocked. Marika, how much did you pay in total? 49,000. Byron Matthew found this Golf 6 GTI on Car Global Auctioneer's Facebook page. I managed to get in contact with Peter price of the car was at 100,000 Rand. You need to pay a deposit amount of 12,000 Rand in order to secure the car. So I paid the 12,000 Rand. He sent me the location which was in Springs. There was no car dealership in sight and there's no Peter on site either. We decided to buy our own imaginary car from Car Global Auctioneers. They told us to pay a 9,000 Rand holding deposit for this Toyota Fortuna. And guess who sent carte blanche a copy of his ID? Peter, you're running an online scam. You're robbing people of their money in these times. What is your name, your real name, Peter? You've got an interesting accent. What part of South Africa do you come from? Eastern Cape, where about? Why are you asking me so a lot of questions? Well, if you say that uh, you're not robbing people, that you're not a fraudster, then let's meet up and chat. What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? Because you're too busy scamming people, that's why. I'm trying, I'm trying to make it a job. Okay. Let's let's come to your dealership. Where is it? 29 Springs Road. 29 Springs Road in Nigel. Okay, so we can come and meet you there. We didn't pay a deposit to Peter, but can you imagine the shock of arriving at the spot in the felt knowing that you've parted with 10, 20, 50 thousand rands? The dealership next door belongs to Mohammed Sidat. He's used to fielding questions from victims who've lost thousands. On a constant basis, every day, every day you'll find at least three, four, five people come in looking for global car auctioneers. They have multiple, I mean, over 80 or 100 Facebook pages. They're running this massive ring. It's all linked to one uh, account, which is Global Car Auctioneers. This fake website has Gold Star Auto Sales in Poch. Here's Peter again, but he's actually a radiology professor in South Carolina. This is a Broadway actor, and this is Australian murder victim Justine Diamond. Another non-existent business is Northrand Motors Auctioneers, and it's here that Byron's imaginary Golf 6 is still for sale. We've come to Boxburg to look at cars advertised by Northrand Motors Auctioneers. Except the website we looked at is fake. The syndicate has simply stolen this dealership's identity and made it look legitimate. Sean Edwards is the manager of Nordrand Motors. We see, I'd say, between five and ten people a day. That's been scammed. Because I've been, I had a guy here that came here with an invoice. He had an invoice of banking details. I've never seen a motor business company using Capitec as a bank 
for cap to, to deposit money in? I paid it into a Capitec savings account. Through Capitec? The banking details is Capitec banking details. I have a list. I have about 13 Capitec accounts. We asked Capitec for an interview, but they referred us to the South African Banking Risk Information Center. Criminals in this instance chose Capitec as the bank that they would prefer to launder their proceeds through, right? But we have found that all banks are equally susceptible. CEO Nishal Mulal says the organized crime syndicates use legitimate accounts belonging to money mules. The money mule takes this account and allows a syndicate to transact on the account for the syndicate's purpose. And in return, the syndicate typically gives the money mule some form of a reward. Maybe it could be some money or it could be a gift. You know, we, we are talking about billion rand business and not a million rand business. But if you're paying money into car global auctioneers um, and uh, the account's in the name of the mule, why is it accepted? The only thing that is validated is to confirm that a, the account number to account number is absolutely correct. There is no validation that takes place on the name of the account holder. And that's because the system is not designed like that. The system doesn't pay person to person. It in fact pays account number to account number. Do not buy online. Car dealers, reputable ones, are all over this country. You don't have to travel too far. I wouldn't recommend buying on auctions anyway, even if they are genuine um, auctioneers, because it's a footstool deal. The Consumer Protection Act does not help you. Even if the car actually exists, it can end up costing you so much.